So it's November 25th. It is the day of the first significant snowfall here on Cranberry Lake. And I'm out for the Bill Mason paddle. This year I'm particularly grateful for the chance to be in the stillness of the lake and the shore and the snow because the rhythms with nature, the sun, the moon, the seasons, always are restorative. They come like clockwork in spite of all the nasty things we're doing to the earth. The seasons still come and go. But I'm thankful for so many things this morning. I'm thankful for family and health. I'm thankful for peace. I'm thankful for the efforts of people who try to make peace. I'm thankful for the simple kinship of animals, which is far from simple. I'm thankful for good friends, although we haven't seen much of anybody for the past seven months. I'm thankful for friends who have passed during this time. I wish we could have given them a better send off. But in a strange way, I'm thankful for the intimacy of Zoom, the wonderful thing that's come into our lives. My friend Jeannie Finch in Calgary died of the same brain tumor Gord Downey died of. And her husband David, who's a long time friend and paddler and kindred spirit writer, not only embraced his wife up to and including the moment she took her last breath, but he also followed her wishes and had a service for her that was conducted online but from the church they attended. But when the three people who remember Jeannie stood up to eulogize their friend, it wasn't like they were delivering a story about Jeannie Finch to a big audience in a big room. Those of us who participated online looked right in the eyes of the person who was speaking and it was strangely intimate and I'm, I'm thankful for that. I wish Jeannie was still with us. I remember Hugh Allen and Lynn Horwood also who died during the COVID period and Emerson Baxter no more. But I'm thankful for today the pending departure of one of the most disturbing aspects of this year which was the erstwhile president of the United States, who somehow incinerated decency and truth and honesty and respectability and civility. And all these last weeks have been like a cage match in the Canadian basement. I just felt a glimmer that maybe we can return to rather more old fashioned and conventional, but enduring notions of truth and honesty and respectability and dependability and service. All of those things have been in jeopardy and I, I fear the damage is perhaps more deeply affecting than, than we know. Getting out of the World Health Organization, getting out of the Paris Climate Accord, opening up leases on the North Slope and in the Chukchi Sea again for drilling, looking after his friends, looking after his gloriously dysfunctional family. We just get a sense this morning that maybe all of that's it's gone or it's on its way. And then there's the pandemic, the second wave. I am thankful for the ways in which this time of family building, rebuilding, community building, a time to assess and reassess and figure out what's important. And one of the things I keep coming back to are the rhythms of nature.